Ladies and gentlemen, as we are about to begin, please be seated. I have a few housekeeping notes to make before the seminar. First, I'd like to seek your cooperation in completing the seminar. Please switch your mobile phones to silent mode or turn it off to avoid interruption. Thank you for your kind cooperation and attention. First of all, let's show our gratitude to our God who has given us mercies and blessings so we can attend the seminar in good condition and healthy situation. I'd like to give a warm welcome to all of the audience. Thank you for taking your time off your busy schedule to join us today. We hope you learn a lot today. What is the key to success? Is it IQ? Is it luck? The answer is about to come. Before we get started, let me read today's agenda. The first agenda will be the opening and then continued by the main session, a seminar by Ms. Angela Lee Duckworth and Yana Savitsky, continued with the wrap up and the end closing. Before we begin today's main session, I'd like to introduce our speaker. Our speaker for today is Ms. Angela Lee Duckworth. She is an American academic psychologist and a science author. She is the professor of the University of Pennsylvania, where she studies grit and self-control. She has wrote seven non-fiction books since 2015 at the age of 45. Please welcome Ms. Angela Lee Duckworth. The time is yours. When I was 27 years old, I left a very demanding job in management consulting for a job that was even more demanding, teaching. I went to teach seventh graders math in the New York City public schools. And like any teacher, I made quizzes and tests. I gave out homework assignments. When the work came back, I calculated grades. What struck me was that IQ was not the only difference between my best and my worst students. Some of my strongest performers did not have stratospheric IQ scores. Some of my smartest kids weren't doing so well. And that got me thinking. The kinds of things you need to learn in seventh grade math, sure, they're hard. Ratios, decimals, the area of a parallelogram. But these concepts are not impossible. And I was firmly convinced that every one of my students could learn the material if they worked hard and long enough. After several more years of teaching, I came to the conclusion that what we need in education is a much better understanding of students and learning from a motivational perspective, from a psychological perspective. In education, the one thing we know how to measure best is IQ. But what if doing well in school and in life depends on much more than your ability to learn quickly and easily. So I left the classroom and I went to graduate school to become a psychologist. I started studying kids and adults in all kinds of super challenging settings. And in every study my question was, who is successful here and why? My research team and I went to West Point Military Academy we tried to predict which cadets would stay in military training and which would drop out. We went to the National Spelling Bee and tried to predict which children would advance farthest in competition. We studied rookie teachers working in really tough neighborhoods, asking which teachers are still going to be here in teaching by the end of the school year. And of those, who will be the most effective at improving learning outcomes for their students? We partnered with private companies asking, which of these salespeople is going to keep their jobs? And who's going to earn the most money? In all those very different contexts, one characteristic emerged as a significant predictor of success. And it wasn't social intelligence, it wasn't good looks, physical health, and it wasn't IQ. It was grit. 
Grit is passion and perseverance for very long-term goals. Grit is having stamina. Grit is sticking with your future, day in, day out, not just for the week, not just for the month, but for years, and working really hard to make that future a reality. Grit is living life like it's a marathon, not a sprint. A few years ago, I started studying grit in the Chicago public schools. I asked thousands of high school juniors to take grit questionnaires, and then waited around more than a year to see who would graduate. Turns out that grittier kids were significantly more likely to graduate, even when I matched them on every characteristic I could measure: things like family income, standardized achievement test scores, even how safe kids felt when they were at school. So it's not just at West Point or the National Spelling Bee that grit matters; it's also in school, especially for kids at risk for dropping out. To me, the most shocking thing about grit is how little we know, how little science knows about building it. Every day, parents and teachers ask me, "How do I build grit in kids? What do I do to teach kids a solid work ethic? How do I keep them motivated for the long run?" The honest answer is. I don't know. <laughs> What I do know is that talent doesn't make you gritty. Our data show very clearly that there are many talented individuals who simply do not follow through on their commitments. In fact, in our data, grit is usually unrelated or even inversely related to measures of talent. So far, the best idea I've heard about building grit in kids is something called growth mindset. This is an idea developed at Stanford University by Carol Dweck, and it is the belief that the ability to learn is not fixed; that it can change with your effort. Dr. Dweck has shown that when kids read and learn about the brain and how it changes and grows in response to challenge, they're much more likely to persevere when they fail because they don't believe that failure is a permanent condition. So growth mindset is a great idea for building grit, but we need more, and that's where I'm going to end my remarks because that's where we are. That's the work that stands before us. We need to take our best ideas, our strongest intuitions, and we need to test them. We need to measure whether we've been successful, and we have to be willing to fail, to be wrong, to start over again with lessons learned. In other words, we need to be gritty. About getting our kids grittier. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mrs. Duckworth, for your amazing session. Our next session will be given by Yana Savitsky, a sophomore of Lake Forest High School. Yana has passion for storytelling and helping others. Today, Yana will share to us her learning method. Give a warm welcome to Anna. The time is yours. When I first told my friends that I was doing a talk on a study method that I use, I could see the collective look of disgust that swept across their faces as they processed what I just told them. So bear with me as I firmly believe that the Pomodoro method has the power to change your life. My typical cycle of studying used to start out determined. I would come home, sit down at my desk, and do a couple of worksheets. The only problem was that productiveness only lasted for an hour, as I would easily get distracted. I would usually spend a couple hours on my phone, and then I would snap back into determination, but find myself getting burned out once again as the minutes ticked away. I would work until I physically couldn't anymore. I'd pass out, utterly exhausted. In my rigorous course choice this year, I had made myself promise that I would be productive. I had to. I, I had to succeed, and yet I, I failed to do that every single day. I struggled to stay afloat, fatigued, stressed, and strained, and I snapped as a result. And quite truthfully, I was disappointed. Disappointed with myself. Then one day. I came across a video. It was a video telling me how to study better, 
And I was intrigued by one specific tip, the Pomodoro method. So what is it exactly? Well, you start out by deciding on a task and estimating the amount of time that it will take you. Take, for instance, this AP World chapter outline. I estimate that it will take me four hours of work, give or take. But instead of thinking about the outline as four hours of work, I'm going to think about it in terms of 25 minute increments, or Pomodoros. So this outline would in theory take me eight Pomodoros. The next step is to work for those 25 minutes with absolutely no distractions, or you have to restart the Pomodoro. But after that hyper-focused work, you get to reward yourself with a five minute break, which serves to recharge and refresh you in preparation for the next Pomodoro. Four cycles of this pattern of 25, five minutes, and then you get to take a long break, 15 to 30 minutes. For myself, I typically still try to stay off my phone during these breaks and make some coffee, take a short walk, or when I want to feel super productive, I'll do chores. I know, shocker. <laughs> this method was actually developed in the 90s by Francisco Cirillo, who named the system Pomodoro, which means tomato in Italian, after this 25 minute kitchen timer that he used to track his work. And it is important to know that although he developed the system for a 25 five minute pattern, the Pomodoro is a fluid system. It's designed to help you and help you with your work. For myself, I stick to the traditional 25 five minute pattern when I'm doing worksheets or studying for tests. But for longer, more time consuming assignments like, let's say, projects or essays, I choose to work for much longer increments and take shorter breaks. So here I am now. I'm still not the perfect student, and I want to iterate that, but the Pomodoro has changed me. It's changed the way I think and act about my work. When needed, I could spend a full day simply working, as I am just recharged and kept stimulated through the whole day. With a timer constantly ticking, I find myself working quickly in order to achieve and accomplish those goals through each 25 minute increment. And quite truthfully, it just feels so much more rewarding and fulfilling. Being able to check things off after the other, watching your pile of work go down, knowing that you accomplished something that day, instead of not to call you out, but wasting two hours on Netflix. <laughs> so now it's my turn to ask you, are you as efficient as you can be? Are you productive, or does your time seem to just slip away? Do you complete your work or is it scraped together at the last minute? The Pomodoro is a fluid system designed to help you produce higher quality work in a shorter amount of time. But whatever method, I encourage you to think about your time differently, to set goals for yourself and strive to meet them, to set aside the constant distractions and focus on your tasks at hand. You never know how much time you really have until you start to use it. And it looks like my break is over. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yana, for your amazing and thoughtful sharing. We are now arrived at the time for wrap up. Today, we are having a great time listening to our speakers, Angela Lee Duckworth and Yana Savitsky. Mrs. Duck, Mrs. Duckworth explains to us about her theory of grit. Grit is passion and perseverance for very long-term goals. And our second speaker, Yana, she has just shared to us how Podomore method changed the way she thinks and acts toward her work, allowing her to achieve her goals and make the most of her time. Once again, I'd like to thank to our speakers that has shared a great, remarkable sharing session. I hope that we all can later use the knowledge of what we got today to improve ourselves to be better. We are now at the end of today's seminar. Thank you for your participation and attention. Hope you have a great day.